Welcome back. In this lecture, we'll talk about triggers. This is often considered as one of those big topics in Apex coding. I have to say that I'm pretty excited. I think you'll be amazed to see how that, for all the hype, they aren't all that complicated. Have you ever run into any of these workflow limitations where your workflow can't create or update a separate object or you're not allowed to reference certain fields like owner name or even you need your workflow to do more than simple field updates and emails? Nothing is more frustrating than being limited by a platform. Imagine triggers to be workflows without any limitations. A trigger is simply a bit of code that kicks off processes when we change a record in Salesforce. The whole purpose of a trigger is to wait around listening for some kind of event to happen. Events like insert, update, delete, or even undelete. That's why they are called triggers, because they are triggered by some kind of database event. They are sort of like conditional logic. If an account is updated, do this, and then this, if an account is deleted, do this, and so on. There are two main types of triggers, before triggers and after triggers. The structure of these two types of triggers are the same, but the difference is when they do their work and the data they have available to them. Before triggers affect the data before the record is committed to the database. For example, you might want to validate or update a certain field in a record before writing it to the database. After triggers let you use the data in a record after it has been committed to the database. Anytime you want to pull out an ID of a record that you committed to the database, you want to use an after trigger. A great example would be creating any related records. Let me walk you through a flowchart that helps you understand what happens in before and after triggers. Once a change is made to a record, the trigger gets fired. If it's a before trigger, the trigger is going to call the method in the class and pass it all the records that were just changed. The method would do things like validate data, make changes to the data, and then finally the records are committed to the database. If it is an after trigger, records are first committed to the database, then the trigger is going to call the method in the class and pass it all the records that were just changed. Then finally, the method would do things like creating related records using the IDs or perform SQL queries using the IDs of records that were created. Let me talk about two scenarios. Imagine when a new contact is being created, you want to validate couple of fields and also update certain fields based on some criteria. Here, I would use a before trigger because I need to validate and update the record before the contact is written to the database. Think about another scenario where I need to create a related opportunity as soon as an account is created. In this scenario, we need to use the newly populated account ID to create a related opportunity. Therefore, we would use an after trigger. You should think of before triggers as a default kind of trigger because they're used way more often than after triggers. They also have an added advantage of not needing DML to save your changes. With before triggers, your changes to the data are made before record is saved. So it's like you're sneaking in your change and then using Salesforce standard save functionality. That's pretty neat. However, there are still plenty of times you will want to use an after trigger. The basic structure of a trigger looks like this. Pretty straightforward. Trigger, name of the trigger, on what object, and when you want the trigger to fire. Let's modify our base trigger and add few elements. You can probably see that there is only one object specified, which is account. That's because triggers are specific to one and only one object. They can of course involve code that affects many other Salesforce objects, like creating or updating records, but we'll cover that later. How do you say when you want the trigger to run? You may want a particular piece of code to run whenever a new record is inserted into your database and when a record is updated. 
A nice thing about Apex triggers is that you don't have to duplicate code to handle this. We can just add another event here. You can probably tell what we did here. We asked the trigger when the account is added or updated in our database, then please run the following bit of code. There are seven different events that triggers can listen for. Before insert, before update, before delete, after insert, after update, after delete, and after undelete. Where do we put the code we want to run when the apex trigger is, well, triggered? There are two options, within the trigger itself or in a separate apex class which we call from within the trigger. For lots of reasons, the second way is the apex best practice. It's easier to read the code and understand what's going on. This is a huge part of efficient code maintenance. Best practice is to keep all your business logic out of the actual trigger. It's easier to reuse code. Classes and methods are reusable. They can be called from anywhere else. It's easier to control the order of code to run if you only have one trigger for each object. When you're dealing with small subsets of your code, it's easier to write distinct unit tests. We haven't talked about unit tests yet. We should get to them soon. So just to quickly summarize, we talked about what triggers are. A trigger is simply a bit of code that kicks off process when we create or change a record in Salesforce. You can think of triggers as workflows without any limitations. There are two main types of triggers. Before triggers affect the data before the record is committed to the database. And after triggers let you use the data in the record after it has been committed to the database. The syntax of a trigger looks like this. Trigger, name of trigger, on object, and events you want the trigger listen to. There are seven different events the trigger can listen to. In the next lecture, my co-instructor Sam will talk about creating a trigger, apex class, and a method, and tying it all together.